Arthusians monks are a profound group of men that are a model for us to imitate. And in today's video, we're going to talk about them and things we can imitate from them and a brief history about them. They're known for their profound silence and deep contemplation. The Carthusians live a life of solitude, prayer, and silence. The Carthusian Order, founded by St. Bruno in 1084, is one of the most or the most contemplative and austere religious order in the Catholic Church. The monks live in individual cells, coming together only for communal prayer. Their lives are characterized by solitude silence and a profound commitment to seek God. To understand the essence of the Carthusian way of life, let us turn to the words of St. Bruno himself. He once said, while the world changes, the cross stands firm. In their pursuit of God, Carthusians embrace a life of simplicity, obedience, and humility. Their daily routine resolves around the liturgy of the hours, manual labor, and private prayer. It's a life that echoes the sentiments of St. John Chrysostomo, who said, Prayer is an all-efficient panoply, a treasure undiminished, a mind never exhausted, a sky obstructed by clouds, a heaven unruffled by storm. It is the root, the fountain, the mother of a thousand blessings. The heart of the Carthusian order is the Carter House, their monastic home. Here each monk lives in a hermitage, spending the majority of the time in solitude. The Carthusian truly embodies the words of St. Teresa of Avila, who once said, In solitude, we discover that our life is not a possession to be defended, but a gift to be shared. Silence is a hallmark of the Carthusian life, fostering in an environment where one can listen to the whispers of God. As St. Faustina Kowalska wisely noted, Silence is a sword in the spiritual struggle. A talkative soul will quickly be caught in the devil's trap. So let us always seek silence. Like Faustina said, the person who talks too much is going to fall in the devil's trap. In their silence, Carthusians seek a profound encounter with the divine, echoing the sentiments of St. John Climascus, who said, Silence is the mother of prayer, a recall from captivity, preservation of fire, an overseer of thoughts, a watch against enemies. Now let us see what a normal day for these extraordinary monks is. A normal day for the Carthusians starts at 11.30 p.m. 11.30 p.m. They rise up and then they have personal prayer in cell. And then by 12.15 a.m. they go to church and then they pray louds, which is from the liturgy of the hours, and then the angelus. And then between 2.15 and 3.15 a.m. they return back to the cell and they sleep. By 6.30 or 6.45 a.m. they rise again. By 7 a.m. they pray or they read in preparation of the Mass. At 8 a.m. they have Mass in the church. By 10 a.m. they have Office of Terce in Cell, which is Liturgy of the Hours. By noon they have Angelus and then Sexta, which is also from the Liturgy of the Hours, and then a meal. After the meal there is a time called Recreation which they can use freely. By 2 p.m., they return to the work which they were doing by obedience. So they're assigned to do different tasks and whatever task it is that you have to do that day. By 4 p.m., it marks the end of all activities and then they pray vespers from the liturgy of the hours in their own cell. By 4.15, they have vespers in church and then they return to their cell and then they have spiritual reading. Between 6 and 6.30, they have supper, which is like a dinner, a lighter meal. And then by 6.45 p.m., they have Angelus, and then they have Compline, which is the last of the liturgy of the hours. And then by 7.30 and 8 p.m., they go to sleep, and they repeat. That's their life, day in, day out, every single day. So as you can see, this is a routine of saints, pure people, prayer work and learning 
Another thing that I love about the Cartusians monks and I came to learn is that they hate, they despise attention. When one of them dies in the Carter house, they just place them in a dug hole without no actual graveyard or name to signify that you were buried there. So they just put them in a hole, that's it. No name, no nothing. So after a few years, you're like, was my friend buried there or was he over there? The only one who knows who was buried where is the superior, which he has everything documented. When they publish a book, they don't have from Sergio Ramirez. No, they have from Cartouche. <laughs> Just like that. Like I said, they despise attention. They don't want anybody to know who they are. And that's something we could imitate from them. Maybe not to that degree, but in some way, let's imitate them. Because pridefulness, vanity, all that is extremely bad. Only one day a week, they interact as a community. So the whole week, they never interact. Only once a week. Other than that, they just live in silence. Complete silence. And they also can't interact with the outside world. So family, friends, never again going to see them. The only way they communicate with family members or the outside world is with letters, which they can only send seven a year. Seven letters, that's it. There is a profound story of the Cartusians, which I will let Father Mike tell it. And I'm going to put also his YouTube channel in the description below. I finally found a story that I was looking for some record of for years. And I found it in Nicholas Diaz's book, A Time to Die. The author visited eight different European monasteries and spoke with the monks about the mystery of death and passing to eternal life and what it's like to die in a monastery. Fascinating read, but he tells the story when he was visiting the Grand Chartreuse in France, visiting the Carthusians, which are the strictest religious order um, an ancient religious order in the Catholic Church, the Carthusians. You need to learn about the Carthusians. But anyways, the Carthusians, by the way, their whole life is pretty much kept in silence, strict fasting. They keep vigil middle of the night, every night. They're, they're radical. They're an awesome community. You need to learn about them. But anyways, here's the story. In the 19th century, the monks made an astonishing discovery. While digging a grave next to the oldest ones, they came upon a perfectly preserved corpse. Its preservation after decades in the ground was a miracle. The monks ran to the Reverend Father. His response was final. Close the grave, dig next to it, and don't tell anyone about it. And so this is typical Carthusian um, hiddenness and you might be saying oh then they have a lot of canonized saints because they have a holy routine they sacrifice they live in silence but to your surprise there's barely any canonized saints except saint bruno if i'm not mistaken i think he's the only one because as an old saying says cartusia santos facit sed non pate facit which means the Carter house makes saints, but does not make them know. Let me repeat that. The Carter house makes saints, but doesn't make them know. All those people, all those monks, most likely they're saints. I mean, just by their routine, it's incredible. And they don't make them know. Like I said, they despise attention. Wow. To conclude, let us go over some things we could imitate from them. The first one, embrace silence and solitude. Cartusians prioritize silence and solitude, providing a conductive environment for deep contemplation and prayer. While a complete withdrawal from the world might not be feasible for us, obviously, try to find time for silence and solitude. This is really important. I used to do this in the seminary. We will have time of just silence. And it's really important if the monks, religious people are doing it. It's because of something. 
we are surrounded by plenty of noise and we never have time to meditate, to reflect, to know our desires, our goals. And that's when time and silence help you in. So let us imitate them in that sense. Number two, structure prayer life. The monks follow a structured schedule of prayer throughout the day. Incorporating regular prayer into our routine can help us deepen our relationship with the Lord. It could be any kind of prayer. It could be either the rosary, a personal prayer you have, whatever it is. The important thing is that we must pray, pray, and pray. The person who stops praying, it's the beginning of his spiritual decline. Number three, mindful living. Carthusians live a life of mindfulness, praying attention to each moment and each task. Being fully present in our daily activities, whether it's work, eating, or interacting with others, can lead to a more fulfilled and meaningful life. Being present at every moment. Number four, regular retreats. Carthusians take extended periods of solitude. And while not everyone can commit to such lengths, incorporating regular retreats or breaks to disconnect from the busyness of daily life can be rejuvenating. Maybe just putting your electronics down for a moment for a day, which is crazy, almost impossible for us. And it could also be doing something away of your daily routine. It could be like going for a walk without electronics and saying, you know what, instead of using my phone while going for a walk, I'm going to reflect on the Lord's passion. Number five, ownership of schedule. The monks have a carefully plan schedule and not just the monks but all religious order especially the cartusians taking ownership of our schedule setting priorities and avoiding unnecessary distractions can lead us to a more fulfilled life having a carefully planned schedule will benefit us and to help you in this i have done a planner that could benefit you in scheduling your day your goals and it also has the daily readings of the day. So if you go to Mass Daily like I do, this is going to be extraordinary for you because you know which readings are going to be said that day. I'm going to leave the link to my planner in the description below. To conclude, the Cartusian way of life teaches us the beauty of solitude, the power of silence, and the steadfastness of the cross in a changing world. And like St. Bruno said, in the solitude and silence of the wilderness, God gives his athletes the reward they desire, a peace that the world does not know, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, and I hope you start imitating the Carthusian monks, maybe to not their length, but in some way. And thank you so much. God bless you. Please keep me in your prayers, and I'm going to continue to keep you in my prayers. God bless you.